In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This past Wednesday, I got to do something I really enjoy. I got to ride my bike to work for the first time this year. The weather had warmed up and the ice and snow had melted and it was uh, a great time to ride my bike. It's something I've been enjoying doing ever since we moved to Michigan. In fact, I've been riding to Rochester long before I ever came to St. Philip's. It was almost 10 years ago when I was riding around Rochester after my ride into town, got some coffee, and then I noticed this Episcopal church. And I remember thinking to myself, hey, an Episcopal church at the end of this path, wouldn't it be something someday to have a church that I could ride my bike to? Well, it's amazing how life works out. Anyway, it's a very pleasant ride on the Clinton River Trail. It's about 10 miles each way. But I have to say that one direction is more pleasant than the other. There is a very slight incline, and the prevailing wind is west to east. And that means that in the morning, I have an amazing ride. Um, I am just whizzing down the trail, uh, not really noticing the incline, and not paying any attention to the tailwind, just imagining myself to be a very a powerful uh, cyclist, and uh, I arrive at work refreshed and energized after that exercise. But the afternoon ride home is a different story. In the summer, my trip home is often during the hottest part of the day. That unnoticeable incline is suddenly very noticeable indeed, and that invisible tailwind is suddenly a very noticeable headwind often picking up intensity in the afternoon as well. It's a much slower and harder ride home in, in my ride. Apparently, this is not just a bicycling phenomenon. Social psychologists have studied what they call the headwind-tailwind asymmetry. That is, our tendency to focus far more on whatever obstacles or headwinds we face in our life and to ignore the blessings and tailwinds that we often experience. It is such a noticeable phenomenon in psychology that they've been looking at this and the consequences can be very um, severe. Too much attention on the headwinds and obstacles and problems can leave us feeling a sense of bitterness a sense that life is not fair, an over-focus on our challenges, and an under-focus on all of the privileges and blessings we've received. This came home to me during the class that we've been doing ecumenically on racism, and I've had to kind of wrestle with that controversial topic of white privilege. What does it mean to have privilege? And I've had to admit to myself that part of the tailwind in my life has been privilege of every kind. I have lived an amazingly blessed and privileged life. And when I stop and think about that, I can be full of gratitude for all the blessings that I've received. The problem is that I often don't stop to think about those things. I'm often focused on what's next. You know, what have you done for me lately, God? Uh, what are my challenges? And I can become grumpy about the smallest, most trivial things. This was certainly, this headwind, tailwind uh, asymmetry is certainly an issue in our first reading today from the Bible. The Israelites are such a wonderful example of the universal human tendency. Think of it. They have been rescued from slavery in Egypt. God has brought them through the Red Sea miraculously. He has led them by day with a pillar of cloud and by night with a pillar of fire. He has given them manna to eat miraculously in the wilderness. He has given them water from the rock to drink. They have experienced directly the power and providence of God, miracle after miracle. But by our reading in Numbers today, the thrill has worn off. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and we detest this miserable food. I love the illogic of that. There's no food, and we hate the food. 
That is a great example of headwind thinking. They have gotten stuck spiritually, looking only at the negative and totally forgetting about the positive. It's easy to focus too much on the Israelites in this regard, but I think it's very helpful for us to see this as a universal tendency, a, a part of our own selves. The Israelites can feel the headwind of the frustration of their time in the wilderness, the uncertainty, the monotony. In their warped memory, slavery in Egypt is looking rosier than freedom in the wilderness. They have forgotten the tailwind of grace, the ways in which God saved them and continues to provide for them. It takes a crisis, deadly, fiery serpents, to wake them up and remind them to turn back to God. The symbol of their deliverance, what my wife calls the snake on a stick, is lifted up by Moses as a sign of their salvation. Jesus, in the gospel, reminds Nicodemus of this famous story in, in our gospel today. The headwinds are still there all these centuries later. The light has come into the world, the light of Jesus, the Son of God, bringing uh, the good news of God's love and salvation, and people are still choosing the darkness, still focusing on the headwinds, still ignoring the tailwinds. But Jesus says, just as Moses once lifted up the sign of salvation for the Israelites, soon Jesus will be lifted up as a sign of salvation for all people. The old symbol was a snake on a stick, a symbol of suffering and death transformed into life. The new symbol will be the cross, another symbol of suffering and death transformed into life. There is a wind, a spirit of God that carries us and sustains us throughout our lives. The problem is that we too often forget it, take it for granted. It is a tailwind and we are, like those ancient Israelites, far too concerned with the headwinds of our lives. We are too aware of the demands and challenges in our lives and how could we not be because they're ever present. We compare ourselves to others and are full of envy and often bitterness. With those ancient Israelites, we cry again and again, it's not fair. In bitterness, we count every slight, every penny we think we are owed or we deserve. We're good at that. But what we are bad at is counting the unearned blessings we have received and continue to receive every day. St. Paul often spoke of this discrepancy this desire to justify ourselves by our own actions instead of trusting in God. He says in Ephesians today, for by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not the result of works, so that no one may boast, or I might add, might complain. <laughs> grace. The grace of God is the tailwind that sustains us and gives us the assurance of God's love. So the invitation today, I think, in our scriptures is to stop for a moment and appreciate all the tailwinds in our lives, the privileges, the blessings, the kindnesses, the graces, I think of the people who have enriched our lives, our ancestors, our families, our faithful friends, our teachers, employers, our co-workers, first responders and public servants, frontline workers, farmers and food workers, repairmen and women, soldiers and sailors. Once you start, it's hard to stop. These multitudes are lined up behind us, creating the tailwind that carries us forward. And behind all of them is the God who made us and sustains us, the Holy Spirit who blows us ever forward 
into the abundant life of the kingdom of God. Amen.